now solving rational functions graphically. And when we solve them graphically, we don't have to worry about checking because we can only find solutions that exist. So there, there is no extra solutions here. So if I'm solving it graphically, the answer I get is always true. I don't have to check it because it's a part of the graph. All right, when we solve these, it's very similar to what we do with polynomials. All right, first step is set it equal to zero. Right, as always, whenever we're solving graphically, set it equal to zero. It's just the easiest way to go. All right, find the rational functions, zero then, and we do this, the, the calculator can do this, right? And so you graph the rational function once you've set it equal to zero, and then use that idea, use the zero program in the calculator. Now you should always make note of where your asymptotic behavior is, just because again, it's always just a good rule of thumb to do that. What values are not in my domain? What would give me division by zero? Again, just a good idea uh, because those values can't be a part of my original function. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Graph the function. I usually start with a standard window and then if I can't see everything, I'll, I'll go to my table and adjust my window as I go. Uh, but most things tend to happen between 10 and negative 10. Right? As I get past 10 and negative 10, that starts to be my end behavior where I'm approaching my asymptotes, either my slant or my horizontal. So first example. So the first thing we're going to do is set it equal to 0. So I've got to move this to the other side. So I subtract it. So negative 4 over x squared minus 1, negative 4 over x squared minus 1. And so it's just going to be a long function. It's going to be 2 over x minus 1 plus 1 minus 4 over x squared minus 1 equals 0. And then you've got to be careful when you plug these into the calculator. I'm going to go to my calculator in a second. You've got to make sure you put parentheses around the division part. All right, that's what you have to do. And so now I'm going to go graph it. So I've set it equal to 0, and so I'm going to graph the function 2 divided by x minus 1 plus 1 minus 4 divided by x squared. And when you plug in the, the rational functions, make sure you always put parentheses around the divisor. And so remember, I can't plug in 1 or negative 1 because that would give me division by 0. So I, my answer can't be 1 or negative 1, but again, the calculator can only give me answers that exist. Get my calculator out. So first plug it in. So again, make sure you're careful when you plug it in. 2 divided by parentheses, x minus 1, then plus 1, and then minus 4, divide by parentheses, which is not comma, parentheses, x squared, Standard window should work, so I'm going to move in standard. And so it didn't exist at negative 1. It doesn't exist at positive 1, but there's a hole in my graph there. And so I'm looking for the 0. There's only one 0 here, right? Here it's approaching my asymptote. Here it's approaching my asymptote. And so there's the only one. And so again, I go to my second trace. 0. First curve, second curve. Yeah, so first, so it's got to go all the way over. Left of it, right of it, and guess. Make sure I go to the left of it. And then I make sure I go to the right of it. And then usually I just hit it again instead of enter. And so my zero is at negative three. And so the solution is x equals negative three. And that's the only solution. And it checks, right? I can plug negative three in and it checks. Right, so the next example. The hard part about these is, is just making sure you're careful when you plug it in the calculator. Right, so again, my first step is to set it equal to 0, so move my 5 over, so I have negative 2x squared plus 1 over x minus 5 equals 0. This is what I'm going to plug into the calculator and solve. 0 is the only one that I can't have, and so here, negative 2 divided by x squared plus 1 divided by x minus 5. Standard window I have, so I'll go ahead and graph it. And you'll notice here, it doesn't exist at 0. It has asymptotic behavior there. It, it never, ever crosses my axis. And if you want to double check, you can always zoom out, and it, and it doesn't. This never crosses the x-axis. And so the answer is there is no solution. All right, we had that in the parabola case too. Remember if we draw a parabola that was completely above or completely below the x-axis, there's no solution. Right? Nowhere on the graph 
does it have a zero? So that means in the original function, nowhere on this original function does it equal five. Right? There is no solution, and no solution is perfectly fine answer. All right, one more example. So again, this is a messy one. The hard part about the messy ones is plugging it in the calculator and making sure you're careful. So the first thing, though, I have to move that to the other side, so I've got to subtract from both sides. So I've got 1 over x plus 1 plus 1 over x minus 1, and then minus 1 over x squared minus 1, and then equals 0. So there are three fractions I've got to plug into my calculator. Every time I plug them into my calculator, I've got to remember one divide by parentheses, whatever I'm dividing by. And make a note, I can't plug one or negative one in, right? There should be asymptotes at one and negative one. I will also go through and solve this one by hand. Uh, so I'm going to solve it graphically, and then I'm going to solve it by hand just to show you what happens when I solve it by hand. All right, but graphically first. The hard part about graphically is just make sure you carefully type it in the calculator. So 1 divided by x plus 1, and make sure you put the x plus 1 in parentheses, and then plus 1 divided by parentheses, x minus 1, and then minus 1 divided by x squared in parentheses, and minus 1 in parentheses. All right, standard window should work fine, and so there's my graph. And so what's hard about this one is it's really hard to see what's happening at my tails. So if I adjust my window, I'm gonna go, I'm not gonna leave, I'm not gonna leave my, change my x values, I'm gonna change my y, so I wanna see what's happening near the, the x-axis where y equals zero. And so I'm gonna go maybe negative five, positive five, and see if I can see what's happening there. All right, so I can see sort of what's happening. There is one zero right here in the middle. Over here, it's approaching my axes, and so that's my tails, and I know the behavior of it is it'll approach it at the tail, but it doesn't cross it again. So the only place it's crossing it here is at that value, and so there's my only zero. There's a second trace, zero, left, and then right, and then guess is zero and pull one half. All right, so the answer is x is zero. Now I'm going to show you how to do this by hand. So this one, I'm also going to go back and do it by hand. All right, so there's my, my graphing answer, and it checks. One half works, so it checks. If I want to solve this by hand, all right, so algebraically, you'll notice that, I'll erase this to make my work here. So I already know the answer is going to come out one half. And so if you were going to solve this without your graphing tool, without graphing it, what you'd have to recognize is I've got 1 over x plus 1. 1 over x minus 1, and then this side is 1 over x squared minus 1. But remember, x squared minus 1, I can factor into x minus 1, x plus 1. And so my common factor is the two groups, x minus 1 and x plus 1. And so that's what we're going to multiply by. So we'll multiply both sides by both of those groups. On this side, it's nice. Everything cancels out and leaves me with 1, right? Divides out and leaves me with 1. Over here, I have to be a little more careful. This is going to cancel with that, but I'm still going to be left with an x plus 1. This is going to cancel with the x minus 1. Make sure x minus 1, and so I'm going to be left with x plus 1. And so on this side, I get left with x minus 1 plus x plus 1. On that side, everything cancels out leave me with 1. And so now it's really easy to simplify. Um, I'm going to get 2x here. That negative 1 cancels with that positive 1. And so I'm left with 2x equals 1. Divide by my 2. And I get the same answer I got graphically 1 half. And so just another example by hand, just so you can see another one by hand. And again, it does check. All right, so that's solving rational functions by hand or graphically. And you can use either method. Use either method to solve it either by hand or the graphical method. All right, the hardest part about the graphical method is just be very, very careful when you plug it in your graphing calculator. Rule of thumb, parentheses, 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 always around the divisor. All right, we're going to stop there, and then we're going to get into inequalities.